In this video, we're going to cover what is bidirectional contract testing, how it works, and we're going to go through a demo. Bidirectional contract testing is a new form of contract testing to complement our support for the consumer driven approach with PACT. Whereas PACT is a record and replay style contract test using specification by example to prove correctness, bidirectional contract testing uses a schema comparison approach. PACTflow provides continuous API compliance and breaking change detection by comparing the consumer contract with a provider contract, such as an open API document. It allows teams to generate a contract from existing mocks, such as PACT or YMOC, and to verify API providers using the functional API testing tools, such as Postman, that they are already using. Teams can use existing plug and play contract adapters for popular mocking tools or write their own. In short, you can rapidly upgrade your existing tools and processes into a powerful contract testing solution, improving the ROI of your initiative. Bidirectional contract testing is a feature exclusive to Factflow. The outcomes you can expect from using bidirectional contract testing or BTC is a lower barrier to entry. Because you can reuse your existing tools and processes, you don't need to upskill and, and teach everyone new ways of working. Because you're reusing those existing tools and mocks and work you've already done, and you're gonna leverage those, you're gonna get coverage much more quickly, which means you can scale contract testing across teams more quickly. Because you can do this kind of contract testing uh, with inside the code base and outside of the code base, this allows other roles to play a part in the contract testing initiative, such as testers and QA engineers who traditionally can't get involved with contract testing with PACT. And because of all these factors, you're going to get improved return on investment for implementing a contract testing initiative. So let's see how it works in action. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's have a look at how it works. So just like in contract testing with PACT, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write a set of tests that tech check our consumer behavior uh, against a mock. So we still want to make sure we're testing the consumer side and the provider side independently. And we're gonna use contracts to make sure that the expectations on both sides don't drift. So we write a set of tests against our consumer uh, using a, a mocking tool. So you can use PACT here, or if you're using tools uh, such as Mountie Bank or Wiremock or any other mocking tools, you can use those for this step as well. The important part is that we take those mocks that we used and we generate a contract out of them. That contract takes the form of a packed file. We call that the consumer contract. On the provider side, we actually start with a provider contract, something like an open API spec. Now that we have our open API spec, whether that was generated by hand or automated by code, what we're going to do is we're going to do some provider testing here. We're going to make sure that our provider code base is compatible with that open API spec or our provider contract. We call this step verifying the provider contract. So now we have two contracts. One contract says uh, what the consumer needs of its provider to be able to work. The other contract says what a particular provider can do. We upload those contracts to Packflow. The consumer will operate its own pipeline and push that separately. The provider will have its own pipeline, but both contracts will be uploaded to Packflow. Later on, as we'll find out, we'll do a, what's called a contract comparison to make sure that the consumer is a valid subset of the provider contract. Here is where we do the schema comparison. So if the consumer is making a new change uh, that adds a new field or an endpoint to a contract, for example, it will call the can I deploy feature to make sure that the consumer contract is a valid subset of the provider. And if that field actually does exist on the provider, if it doesn't, it will fail the build and the consumer won't be able to deploy. And conversely, if the provider removes a field or an endpoint or and it makes a change to the, the schema, that is incompatible with its existing consumers, uh, their bill will fail also. So let's recap the steps. On the consumer side, we're going to write test against the mock to verify its behavior. We can use PACT here, in which case the mock will generate a PACT file, or we can use our own mocking tool such as Wiremock, and we need to make, make sure we serialize that contract. The consumer contract is produced, as I said before, it must take the form of a PACT file. And this must capture only the interactions that the consumer code actually uses. Step three, we upload that contract to Packflow. Step four, 
we can now choose to deploy our software, but we need to make sure it's safe to do so. The Can I Deploy tool will tell you this. It will check the compatibility of a particular version of a consumer with the version of the provider it's trying to link to. So for example, if you're trying to deploy to production, we'll make sure that your consumer contract for the current version of the consumer is compatible with, with the, the version of the provider that's currently in production. And if that passes, we'll then deploy the consumer and we'll record the deployment with Packflow to let Packflow know that, that that has happened. Similarly, on the provider side, as I said before, we're gonna start with the, with the provider contract, for example, an open API document. And that can be created by hand or it can be generated by code. In the case it was generated by code, we can skip step two because we know the code is a reliable form of what the contract um, specifies because they are linked together. Uh, if the contract has been generated by hand or manually edited, we need to make sure that the provider is compatible with that code. And we're gonna to use tools like Rest Assured, Dread or Postman or any other functional testing tool to give us confidence the provider is indeed compatible with that code, with that open API spec. The provider contract is then uploaded to Packflow. And as before, we're going to call can I deploy on the provider side to make sure that it's compatible with its consumers. So for example, if the provider was going to deploy to production, can I deploy will check that the current provider contract with the provider is compatible with all the consumers of that provider in production. Lastly, if that passes, we're going to deploy the provider and record that deployment with Packflow.